Good afternoon, my name is Claire Kennedy and today I'm going to be walking you through the psychological concept of signal detection theory using a scenario involving my very own lovely roommates as an example to help you understand. Before we get into that, it's important to understand the concepts of sensation and perception in learning about signal detection theory. Sensation is the ability to detect a stimulus, be it a noise, a taste, or pressure on your skin, and turn it into a private experience. Perception is the process of giving meaning or purpose to these experiences. So, for example, smelling a flower is a sensation, while identifying the smell as being that of a flower is a perception. Signal detection theory describes how the way we perceive stimuli affects our decision-making skills. In signal detection theory, there is a signal and there is noise. The signal is the stimulus, stimulus you are expecting to sense while noise is other stimuli occurring in the environment that will make it more difficult for you to pick out the signal. This idea is important because there will always be some sort of other noise you hear while listening for a specific sound. And this is true throughout life with all of the senses. So without further ado, this is Evelyn, one of my roommates. Evelyn loves The Bachelor, but unfortunately for Evelyn, not everyone in our apartment feels the same. When we, her roommates, see Evelyn watching The Bachelor, we like to tease her about it because of how fake the show is. This, unfortunately, sometimes makes Evelyn feel embarrassed. Because of this, she tries to hide her Bachelor viewing from us, and tries to watch it when the rest of us are not in the apartment. When she believes she hears the sound of a key in the doorknob, she will change the channel so it appears she is watching something else. In this scenario, the signal is the sound of a key turning the lock on our front door, and the noise is the sound of the bachelor in the background, because Evelyn has to discriminate between sound that is coming from the show and sound that may be coming from the lock. These concepts of signal and noise are important because there will always be noise when we are sensing and perceiving. Now, there are two different factors that play into what Evelyn decides to do throughout her bachelor viewing. First, criterion. Criterion is the self-imposed criteria that must be met for Evelyn to subconsciously decide that she is hearing a key in the doorknob and to act accordingly. For example, the criteria might be higher on a day that Evelyn is tired and just wants to relax, as she does not want to change the channel unless she is sure her roommates are coming back whereas it might be lower on a day where Evelyn's feeling particularly anxious and self-conscious about her bachelor obsession, as she is more likely to change the channel if she thinks there's the possibility of her roommates being back. The criterion that must be met for Evelyn to change the channel will likely change day to day, while the other factor, sensitivity, is relatively constant for one person over time. Sensitivity represents how able a person is to discriminate between noise and the signal plus noise. Put more simply, how good they are at accurately detecting the stimulus. One's sensitivity stays relatively constant over long periods of time, with perhaps the only significant change being our sensitivity getting worse later in life as our bodies age. As for Evelyn, she has about the same amount of sensitivity to signals that an average person has, meaning she will accurately identify the signal amongst noise about 50% of the time. So, how does the criterion translate into Evelyn's decision-making process? There are four possible outcomes for a situation in which her roommates might be coming back. If Evelyn's self-imposed criteria are met and she perceives the sound of a key turning in the doorknob, Evelyn will change the channel to another show. If her roommate is actually coming back, this is a hit. If her roommate does not come back, this is a false alarm. If Evelyn's self-imposed criteria are not met, and she does not perceive the sound of a key in the doorknob, she will not change the channel. If her roommate does not come back, this is a correct rejection. But if her roommate does come back, this is a miss. Signal detection theory is important to many facets of our lives, not just our guilty pleasure TV shows. Understanding what factors play into our ability to detect a signal amongst noise is vital in understanding our shortcomings and imperfections as humans, and necessary in taking precautions so that we can prevent serious consequences. Take driving, for example. If we're blasting music in the car, we may not hear the honk of a car about to crash into us. Signal detection theory is one small part of the field of sensation and perception, which allows us a look into the complex workings of perception.